I, I will welcome once again. Hello to uh, to all of you. Um, I will start with the housekeeping uh, rules. So unless you are a speaker, kindly keep your microphone on mute and your video off. Discussants will be given eight minutes for their interventions. During the discussions, kindly either put your question in the chat box or raise your hand for the moderator to see you. The session is being recorded and will be made available on the GPC website in a few days. So now I give the floor to Bruno. Uh, Bruno, please. Hello, can you hear me and see me? Yes, I can hear you and see you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so given you did not uh, present yourself, this was uh, Daniela Chule uh, connecting from uh, Geneva and she works in the UNMAS office in Geneva and uh, supports the MAAOR. Um, so welcome to all. Uh, this is a fantastic event, part of the uh, Global Protection Clusters annual forum. It's so good. I'm seeing so many people are connecting still from many countries, and um, we are happy that you're joining us in this special event um, hosted by the Man Action Area of Responsibility. I think several of you know that the GPC, the Global Protection Cluster, convenes an annual forum every year. Um, however, this year, due to uh, COVID-19 related issues, uh, they have organized a global forum uh, hosted by the GPC Strategic Advisory Group, Child Protection, Gender-Based Violence, Housing, Land and Property, and my nation AORs. So this is a unique series of events that brings together partners, service providers, academics, and donors. Um, as you see, we have adapted this uh, series of events to be 100% online, and hopefully there won't be any glitches today. Um, the specifics of today's event is meant for the mine action area of responsibilities globally. And it's what uh, is termed a thematic event. And I'm so happy to see so many in country coordinators, MAOR members, I can see some are still signing in, and other partners. Um, I think we have uh, hundreds who signed up, but the time is limited. And I'm so happy to uh, have you all around. Um, as we go forward, the theme uh, today is really to um, gather concrete feedback on any guidance requirements you may have around the AOR, whether at the global level, and speak from on behalf of where you are, you operate. We've organized this event in such a way that it is uh, with a broad spectrum and with different perspectives. So that's why we are also having some who are not AOR coordinators uh, participating in the event. It's one event. The way we'll do it, we'll have three series of speakers and then we will stop for a discussion, take a small break, after which we will have uh, a second round of discussion. And the goal really is to move forward on the AOR and have concrete feedback. And this, we are uh, with thanks to uh, William Chemerley, who also uh gave us some guidance some of you who know william is the head of the global protection uh, cluster uh, uh, under his ages we are doing this to see how we can move forward the issue of uh, strategic advice and coordination so uh, without further ado the first part is meant to be the added value of the mine action aor um the first speaker 
whom I'm very pleased to introduce, is now connecting from the Congo, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and she's the program manager uh, for UNMAS there. But until a few months ago, she was also in Iraq as the MA AOR coordinator. And this is Fadwa Benbarek. Fadwa, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Great, thank you very much, uh, Bruno, for this introduction. Um, I hope everyone can hear me and uh, see me well. Uh, let me know if you don't. I, all good? All good. Okay, great, awesome. So I think, Daniela, you're... Uh, next slide, please. Um, first of all, I actually, before starting, I would like to just profess that uh, my presentation with the following. So I, I did recently join the DRC, but um, I've been in a few other countries um, managing the, or coordinating the MAUR, uh, and also at times uh, sitting in uh, the H at the HCT. Um, now, uh, I will use uh, everything in my presentation will be um, drawing from my experiences from all these different countries. Uh, but first, let's start. The DRC slides. Keep going to DRC after her name. Yes, so this is, this is, it's, it's working, I think, at this time. Is it working? No, you have to go to her presentation. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you know, my presentation is short. Okay. okay, good. So to start, so um, in terms of the, the role of the Mine Action A1, just a reminder for everybody, um, is really in humanitarian crisis, uh, Mine Action is coordinated by the MAAOR with, within the protection cluster. In 2020, right now, there's about 16 different countries where there is an MAAOR. These coordinate the contribution of the mine action sector to the humanitarian response plan uh, that you're most uh, familiar with. Really, the objective of the MAOR, in a nutshell, in my point of view, is to ensure that there's predictable, accountable, and effective mine action responses for the people that are at need. And this is what we have been doing, um, I believe, in, for the last few years, uh, for, since the MAORs exist, uh, but particularly in the 16 countries that we are in right now. If we could move to the next slide, uh, Daniela. Just to talk briefly about the DRC, as you could see uh, in the DRC, um, the people in need uh, are mainly in the east of the country. Um, it's not only the most pop the, the population that is at most at ne uh, in need, but it also coincides where in the areas where the conflict is still ongoing and where the most contamination of explosive ordnance is uh, prevalent. So there is an overlap of the needs and the mine action activities and needs as well in, uh, in that country. We move to the next slide, please. Because I'm, I'm, I'm right now working with DRC just to give you a quick overview of what's going on in the DRC. So something quite unusual actually um, is that in the DRC we have um, handed over uh, the, the coordination, the official coordination of uh, the humanitarian mine action um, activities to the CCLAM, who is the national um, authority on mine action. And the CLAM, who is a national NGO, is the cool lead of uh, the MAOR at the national and regional level. We, as UNMAS, the lead, uh, MAOR lead, um, are still present, of course, but we're giving more and more spaces to the national NGOs, but the national authority to um, to conduct the, the, the coordination of humanitarian response. Next slide, please. Just a bit of an overview of what's going on in terms of the HRP 2020. I have to say that because of COVID, um, not a lot of funding uh, is allocated right now to activities that are not overlapping with the COVID-19 response in the, in the DRC. Therefore, at the moment, um, there's no funding allocated to mine action, but you have there what the amount that was received all by national NGOs actually um, in the previous uh, HRP. Next slide, please. So something that I, I really wanted to touch upon today 
um, really to effectively and uh, efficiently, efficiently serve the most at need population, the MCOR does a coordination and conduct independent needs assessment. And this is very important because um, often our na the national authority, well, not in all cases, but it's perceived that the, the government is conflict to the party, therefore could not be um, independent in, in, in the needs assessment in terms of mine action. But also I have to say that sometimes country, uh, countries, even national authorities, have not only humanitarian considerations to take into consideration when prioritizing mine action activities, but um, also, let's say, economic, development, social needs um, that are um, sometimes overlapping uh, with the humanitarian needs, but sometimes they are not. The coordination platform that is the MAOR is also uh, necessary because uh, it allows us as a humanitarian mine action community to efficiently distribute our resources and capacity based on the geography of the country and at the substantive level. Different members of the mine action um, AOR uh, may have different specialties and have uh, sometimes bases in different parts of different countries. Um, it, it, let's say one country in different parts of that same country. Um, and it really allows uh, the members to discuss and to prioritize where they will um, be working based on the availability of other members' um, presence in other parts of the country. But also the platform is very necessary for us as Mine Action to collaborate with other sectors in the humanitarian sector. And that I, I find in my experience mainly when it comes to um, uh, HLP, but child protection as well, that, um, that's something that was quite prevalent um, in Afghanistan in my time and, uh, and uh, a bit in, in Iraq as well. Um, it was, it's very important, especially when it comes to housing land property and how mine action activities may affect the access to the rights of uh, the beneficiaries in the HLP framework, right? So, so this is something that without the Mine Action AOR, we would not be able to collaborate with those other sectors to make sure that we best serve the population that we It's a space also to exchange the best practices as practitioners of, of Mine Action. But something very important, I would say that um, information management, advocacy, advocacy reporting, becomes a bit centralized within the, let's say, the MAOR period often um, that is uh, performed usually by UNMAS, but in the case of Iraq, I am is uh, being um, handed, uh, handled by IMAP, uh, that that was the, the, the entity to be taken care of, the IM needs of the Mine Action AOR, and it allows them, the members, to focus on the work they need to do while um, the, the MAOR having one concerted approach in information management and advocacy. Next slide, please. And something that I really wanted to discuss with you um, today is overlooked in terms of the contribution of the Mine Action AOR in country abroad, as well, uh, globally as well. Um, but it allows us to be, as a group of humanitarian mine action actors, to have a concerted and independent um, unified advocacy, whether it's towards the government, where we are um, using the, the humanitarian cluster system and the leadership to, to advocate for access, uh, for um, uh, and mainly to, to make sure that the needs of the population that is at risk is met, um, but it's also the, it gives us also the opportunity to, to enable the representation of national NGOs that without uh, backing of the rest of the cluster system and also its, its, uh, its colleagues uh, from the International Humanitarian Mine Action um, uh, organizations would not be able to have a voice that it would be uh, heard uh, if, it, if it was uh, diluted on their own. But one thing definitely that I would like to say is that in um, definitely in Afghanistan and here in the DRC as well, the Mine Action AOR was a key enabler to, to, to enable funding for the Mine Action national NGO sector, as opposed to, um, you know, 
only internationals and we know and we know that this is often the case if uh, if you all uh, had submitted a proposal to surf or or <laughs> the hrp it feels like you need a master's degree from oxford to be able to submit them um, but beyond beyond that to be able and some good practice that i've uh, i've uh, i've witnessed and i've done, um, to have the mine action aor uh, coordinator and uh, and co-coordinator to help the national NGO review their proposals, uh, really enable them to um, to to be able to access funding. Uh, sometimes it's just a question of language or understanding how the law firms need to be presented. So this is something very um, that 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 is very important. And of course, in terms of legal uh, advocacy, legal equipment. Back to the advocacy also that is being used um, either through the MAOR, but often uh, using that those mechanism all the way up to the HC to to ensure that the humanitarian um, uh, mine action NGOs are able to respond. Next slide, please. And I, I think most of you that have been working in humanitarian mine action context, you would recognize these. There's common challenges that are real, but sometimes they're just perceived to be <laughs> challenges, but uh, just putting them out there. As I said, funding mechanisms are heavily bureaucratic. We, it's very difficult for national NGOs to, to access that um, without the support sometimes of the coordinators um, because often of language and other things. There is a perception that there's competition between members. Uh, to a certain degree, this is the case in all humanitarian um, uh, system where everyone is hoping to serve the population and, and, and hoping to be the one serving the population. So of course there's competition, um, but, but I think it just enables us also um, with concerted coordination on where we are, um, each of the members are working geographically or based on their comparative advantage and, and activities that they could give substantially, uh, enable us to give the best services to, to the populations we're serving. There is, of course, sometimes difficulties in terms of reporting um, any mine action AOR person, <laughs> coordinator would, would, would probably know that, Activity info is very difficult to get the information on time, and and it's often an, an extra burden for 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 the members to to make sure that to report also in all these systems. But it's a challenge. Um, I think it's something that the cluster community needs to think about on how to 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 make sure that this is done systematically and in in a useful manner. But one. National authority challenges the need for having a uh, humanitarian mine action se sector uh, coordinated by MAOR, and 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 it it puts um, often uh, Anmas that is the lead on the MAOR in a very uncomfortable situation. The um, the national authorities cannot make the difference between the humanitarian. And uh, it could be it could become um, very challenging bureaucratically as well. Um, and next slide. So one thing that I really and this is really based on my independent observation. And right now I am I'm sitting in a position where I'm not managing any MAOR, but I had the opportunity to really think about it and reflect in this last seven years of my experience. Uh, in to the early slides, the intro slides. Okay, Daniela, I think we, we, know can... we can hear you because Daniela is not muted. So just to finish up, to wrap up uh, the grand bargain uh, that you're most likely um, very familiar with, I, I think we really need to walk the talk, um, really when it comes to nationalization and localization. And when I say nationalization, there is still this day, I, in my opinion, not enough coordinators that are of the countries that we are serving in. Um, in Iraq, we have very uh, successful uh, example. Um, Banyasin, I'm not sure if she is 
say uh, that is a, she's Iraqi and she's my coordinator. And this has been quite successful endeavor. Um, and I think as a humanitarian community, we need to, 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 to be uh, more open-minded in, in nationalizing as much as possible this, these positions, but also um, the, the co-coordination roles as well. Um, in a way forward, also continuing to support and increasing the support to national NGOs to access funding and to become co is very important in my opinion. And at the end of the day, these, this is their country. And once the emergency response is over, they will be the ones staying there. And it's, I see also the MAOR as um, an enabler to uh, build or let's say enhance the capacity of these uh, humanitarian mine action NGOs, NGOs and also the, the, the national authorities to, to effectively manage, uh, manage the humanitarian mine action needs. Um, and this is it for me. I'm, I'm sure there will be questions uh, later. Um, I'll be really happy to discuss further as well. Over. Thank you so much, Fadwa. Uh, excellent uh, presentation, excellent um, points that you raise. And uh, we will come back at the end of the first uh, session to um, to have discussions going on. And I, I really want to thank you for being so candid and with your wealth of experience, this is uh, so good for this community. Um, I think I would backtrack a little bit. Uh, I'm getting all kinds of messages while this meeting, and, and uh, if I may ask folks to mute their mics if they are not speaking, uh, check your mic, uh, mute them. We still hear some sound. Um, while this is um, meant for MAO coordinators, and you know what you're doing, we have several guests who are here. Daniela, I don't know while I was speaking in the intro whether there were some slides. Can we show three slides of context? So doing a little bit of backtracking. Um, stop right there. Just for those who are not familiar, while all of you, most of you connected are specialists, so those who are not used to it, we are now, as I in, in my introduction, talking about the uh, global protection cluster. So this is a quick snapshot of the humanitarian cluster system. And you see all the different clusters. And to the right, I think it's to the right on your screen, uh, you will see protection within which we have the mine action AOR. So just to give you context, I think the next slide, I'm not sure what it is, is to show you who are the MA AOR members at the global level. And I apologize, I take full responsibility if I forgot any logo or, or, or uh, naming your organization. This is a gist of those who are around with us. Uh, with my eyes, I don't know whether I see HI, um, who was the co-coordinator. Uh, yes, it is there. Uh, HI was uh, the co-coordinator at the global uh, level, and soon uh, we will hear of the speaker from DDG who will be the incoming coordinator. And the last slide in terms of context, for those who don't know, is just a map to show you the current footprint of MAOR, where we are. I'm not going to comment on your map. So, that's just to give you context, and thank you so much, Fadwa. Now, we will move to another continent, even though Fadwa spoke of Iraq and Congo. We will have now a short introduction by our colleague, Pauline Boyer, who is uh, from the MAAOR in Colombia. And then uh, shortly after, the, the Pauline will briefly give you the context in Colombia, and then we will have the pleasure to introduce the second discussant, who is, um, excuse the pronunciation, uh, Ms. Catherine Guarin Franco, 
who is the project director at the Centro Integral de Rehabilitación Colombia, uh, Fundación CIREC since 2016. She has some 11 years of experience in managerial positions with Colombia's public administration, overseeing the design and implementation of projects with a biopsychosocial approach uh, benefiting vulnerable populations. But just before, Pauline, uh, who will be speaking in English, uh, will we'll give a short intro after which she might, uh, she will do some interpretation. Uh, so bear with us uh, from Spanish to English. Pauline, the floor is yours. You can put your camera on as well. Merci. Gracias. Thank you, Bruno. Gracias. So just to give you, uh, I'm, I'm Pauline Boyer. I'm officer at UNMAS Colombia, and I, I'm just going to give you a very brief introduction on the MAAOR in Colombia. Um, so our main initiatives um, in Colombia are about coordination, mainly through training of the member organizations on a number of, of topics and also sharing of best practices. So for instance, we try to have uh, one member organization uh, sharing best practices during each um, MA AOR session, which are held monthly. Then we have a strong work on, or we try to have strong work on advocacy. Um, so, for instance, um, there was an exercise to identify uh, with the different members gaps in victim assistance response, um, and then plan how each member could um, could help. Um, supporting the response with their own um, expertise and their different um, areas of, uh, of activities. Then, for instance, we have currently joint work with the Office of the Inspector General uh, because this office has identified also weaknesses in the mine action response um, in Colombia um, and has, um, has requested the support of the MAAOR in order to strengthen this, this response. So currently uh, there is a, a joint initiative to, um, to train uh, local authorities so that they know their responsibilities better um, respecting victim assistance and then they can perform their work more effectively. Um, and obviously we also um, uh, work to have a, a stronger inclusion of the uh, mine action sector into the human interior and planning cycle um, through, well, inclusion of mine action in the HNO and the HRP. Um, then uh, we have quite a lot of work on information management as well. So for instance, we developed a security dashboard uh, so that every organization, every mine action organization can register if they had a security incident and that it can feed into the analysis of, uh, of well, the Manexion AOR in general, and, and every organization can better plan um, their operations uh, depending on the security context and what has happened to, to other organizations uh, working in the same area. Um, and then we, we have minimum uh, geographical information system events per year. We try to have uh, even more. Um, so this serves as a, well, information management training for all organizations in the sector, including the Mine Action Authority. So that's a very brief overview of what the Mine Action AERA does in Colombia. Um, as for the HRP in 2020, well, the target population was uh, 121,000 uh, people. However, as you can see, uh, the delivery has been quite low so far, obviously because of, of the COVID um, mainly, uh, which has obliged to stop activities. We had a, a six months lockdown in Colombia, um, which was very, very long. And even if, uh, if humanitarian organizations were allowed to work, it was still very difficult, for instance, to, to hold um, risk education sessions it was not possible. So this is why the number is very low. Also, there is possibly uh, under-reporting from the organizations, and obviously not all the response has been funded, um, just, just a small part. So that's also why the delivery 
uh, is still quite low and hopefully it will uh, fully improve in the next months. Now, uh, I will just uh, give the floor to Catherine. I'm going to translate from Spanish to English. None of them is my uh, native language, so please bear with me. Hola, muy buenos días para todos. Mi nombre es Catherine Guanín Franco. Soy la directora de proyectos del Centro Integral de Rehabilitación de Colombia. Bueno, uh -huh. quiero contarles rápidamente quiénes somos. Um, eh, Paulín, tú me vas avisando, por favor, cuando, cuando, cuando termine para ti. Gracias. Nosotros, el Centro Integral de Rehabilitación de Colombia, somos una fundación colombiana sin ánimo de lucro. Llevamos 44 años de experiencia en la rehabilitación de personas con discapacidad, la atención psicológica de personas víctimas de conflicto y población vulnerable. Um, so, uh, CIREC is a Colombian foundation, um, uh, an NGO with 44 years of experience in uh, rehabilitation, uh, integral uh, comprehensive rehabilitation of uh, people with disabilities and uh, victims of conflict. Trabajamos a través de cuatro unidades misionales, la unidad de salud que se encarga de hacer los procesos de rehabilitación, un poco la imagen que, estás viendo, que están viendo ahí, la unidad de sanando vidas en donde hacemos un acompañamiento psicosocial a las familias eh, de las personas con discapacidad para adelantar procesos de resiliencia e inclusión social, la unidad un de salud donde hacemos procesos de inclusión laboral. Catherine, y, okay. un momento. So we have four uh, units within CIREC, uh, the health unit. Then we have the um, Healing Lives Unit, uh, where we, uh, we have uh, psychosocial support for victims and their families. Además de eso, está la unidad de, de proyectos especiales, que es la unidad que tengo la oportunidad de liderar con un equipo en donde hacemos el acompañamiento en territorio, que ya les vamos a contar. Por favor, um, la siguiente. And then we have the special uh, project unit, um, which we're going to talk a little bit more right now about. Siguiente, por favor. Next, please. Desde la unidad de proyectos eh, especiales tenemos el programa de educación en el riesgo de minas antipersonal, en donde contamos con una profesional, eh, Diana Vázquez, que está acompañándonos en este encuentro, eh, quien Junto con el equipo lideramos el trabajo eh, en las comunidades para la prevención y adopción de comportamientos seguros en zonas contaminadas por minas antipersonal. So within the special projects we have an uh, expressive ordnance risk education unit and we work uh, with communities um, uh, for them to adopt safer behaviors and this is led by Diana Vasquez who is joining us today in this webinar. El objetivo de esta área es fortalecer la competencia de autocuidado y la gestión del riesgo comunitario. Gracias a, a este programa, eh, logramos iniciar nuestra participación en, en el subgrupo. So, this is based on a, a self-protection uh, approach. Uh, uh, we strengthen communities for them to, to um, be able to protect themselves. Um, and thanks to this work, we started working, um, or we, we joined the Mine Action Area of Responsibility. Next, please. Bueno, quiero contarles un poco cómo, cómo iniciamos el trabajo en el subgrupo. En el 2018 tuvimos la oportunidad de participar en una subvención con UNMAS y gracias a este primer trabajo nos invitaron a formar parte de las reuniones periódicas que adelanta el subgrupo aquí en Colombia. So in 2018, we benefited from a grant uh, from UNMAS, and, uh, and through this, UNMAS invited us to uh, participate in the MARA meetings. Um, las cifras en Colombia hoy en día, de acuerdo al último reporte que nos da la Oficina del Alto Comisionado para la Paz, pues son bastante altas. Estamos en oh, aproximadamente 11.919 víctimas por minas antipersonal. Today. Today in Colombia, according to the national authority, uh, we have 11,919 victims, uh, well, casualties um, recorded since 1990. Por esta razón, uh, digamos que um, en el 2019 eh, y a través del Fondo de Emergencias que responde a mecanismos de coordinación, Fondo de Emergencias del subgrupo, 
eh, abrieron la convocatoria eh, para participar con recursos del CEF y dar respuesta de acuerdo a los mecanismos de coordinación del subgrupo a un proyecto que pudiéramos eh, ejercer eh, educación en el riesgo de minas y la atención integral a víctimas en 10 municipios del Chocó, un departamento de Colombia que se encuentra bastante afectado eh, por, por diferentes circunstancias eh, frente a, a la presencia de minas antipersonal. In 2019, uh, there was SERF emergency funding available and uh, the Managed Area of Responsibility coordinated the allocation of the funds and uh, through the MAOR, CIREC was able to apply for these funds um, and then uh, received a grant to work in the Choco department. Choco se encuentra en el Pacífico colombiano y el proyecto consistió en la implementación de dos componentes. Entonces, inicialmente quiero contarles cómo, cómo empezamos a ejercer este, este trabajo en territorio para luego ir conectando co cuál es la importancia de nuestra participación en el grupo. So, Choco is one of the poorest uh, departments of Colombia. I'm sorry, I'm not translating, I'm just adding this. It's on the Pacific coast. Um, and the project was implemented with two components in mind. Um. Next, please. <laughs> Entonces, en el primer componente que consistió en la asistencia integral a víctimas, eh, hicimos una primera atención en crisis. Eh, gracias a los recursos de la CEF, log logramos dar una respuesta de atención y de ayuda humanitaria. Eh, si bien en nuestro país la ruta determina que son las entidades nacionales, el gobierno, las alcaldías quienes deben dar esta respuesta, pues por la situación eh, en la que se encuentra el Chocó, a veces esas respuestas no son tan, tan, tan fáciles de dar. El proyecto nos permitió a nosotros con estos recursos poder hacer esa primera atención en crisis. Eh, dale, eh, Paulín. Uh, so the first component was about uh, victim assistance. Um in crisis, so emergency victim assistance to, to new casualties, basically, um, and, and their families. So um, CIREC was able, through this self-funding, to provide uh, basic humanitarian aid to the families because Choco is a very isolated department and it doesn't always receive uh, the, the support or the financial help it's supposed to, to receive. Um, Therefore, CIREC was able to, to provide support. En la imagen, en la foto que se encuentra en la parte de arriba, a mano izquierda, eh, es el primer encuentro regional que tuvimos con víctimas, en donde el trabajo inicial fue hacer un levantamiento de información de históricos eh, para hacer acompañamiento psicosocial y legal a las víctimas. Uh, hay víctimas eh, de muchísimos años que no habían tenido ningún proceso eh, pues de este tipo de acompañamiento. El, en, en, en este histórico entramos a mirar en qué parte de la ruta se encontraban para dar continuidad pues, a procesos de reparación. So the first picture is a meeting um, between uh, what we call historical victims, uh, people who, who had their accidents maybe a long time ago but did not make a company support. So there was a CIREC organized uh, psychosocial support for these, um, these old victims. En la imagen que se encuentra abajo a la izquierda, les queremos contar que la, eh, la, eje, la ejecución del proyecto en noviembre y diciembre del 2019, tuvimos seis, seis, víctimas, de, seis víctimas de mismo personal eh, y pudimos hacer un segundo encuentro en donde las personas que habían estado en el histórico se encontraron con las personas pues, que desafortunadamente tuvieron accidentes durante la ejecución del proyecto para hacer, continuar con el proceso de, de acompañamiento. Este, este proyecto y gracias a los recursos de la SERF, pues lo, logramos hacer ese, ese proceso de acompañamiento tanto a la víctima como a la familia en el retorno, comportamientos seguros, eh, asistencia económica para satisfacer necesidades básicas como vestuario y elementos de salubridad. Um, so the, the second picture is about um, a meeting uh, between new casualties who suffered their accidents recently and uh, historical victims. Um, who were able to provide peer-to-peer um, -peer psychosocial support and also their families were, were supported as well um, in, um, in um, learning about safe behaviors. Uh, Catherine, se, escucha, eh, se te escucha teclear. 
En a mí no, no. Bueno, alguien, no alguien cerca tuyo. <ríe> no soy yo. Eh, bueno, eh, en la imagen de arriba a la, a, la, a la derecha queremos contarles que fue increíble cómo una de las personas eh, que fue víctima de mina antipersonal, eh, su familia, logramos hacer un acompañamiento. Esto, esto no sucede muy habitualmente. Eh, este ejercicio de hacer este acompañamiento tanto a la víctima como a la familia, pues permite generar procesos de acompañamiento seguro. Y asimismo, pues todas las personas con las que empezamos a hacer el ejercicio nos manifestaban que era la primera vez que uh, habían tenido acompañamiento de una organización eh, y pues lo agradecían y más aún teniendo en cuenta lo que les contaba al principio, que este, este departamento pues es un municipio, perdón, es un departamento con alta afectación. So on the top right picture, we can see um, we supported a family, so not only the casualty, but also the whole family. And they mentioned that it was the first time that uh, they received this kind of, of support. Um, so, um, yep, that's, that's it. Ness, please. Bueno, y el segundo componente del proyecto nos permitió eh, hacer eh, talleres de educación en el riesgo de minas eh, en, varios de, en varios de los municipios, al igual en municipios en donde nunca se había hecho acompañamiento, gracias a los recursos de la CERF, CIREC logró estar en, en, en hacer presencia. Eh, las imágenes muestran, queremos compartirles con estas imágenes cómo eh, pues la situación de nuestro país geográficamente y más por ser eh, municipios lejanos. Eh, el equipo territorial con el que trabajamos se instaló dentro de los municipios para lograr este acompañamiento y este acercamiento con la, con la comunidad. Eh, logramos llegar a hacer talleres de RM en comunidades indígenas eh, quienes tampoco nunca habían tenido ningún tipo de acompañamiento. So, our second component was risk education and our team um, stayed with the communities to be able to, to deliver risk education uh, in the communities. Um, and we also worked with indigenous communities who usually don't get risk education because they're very isolated. Bueno, quiero contarles que este proyecto tuvo um, un ejercicio maravilloso eh, hecho por primera vez en el país. Digamos que en la participación del subgrupo sabíamos de la importancia del enfoque de género, pero este enfoque siempre había sido tra trabajado desde el nivel organizacional eh, de, las, de las instituciones. Eh, junto con el equipo y gracias a esos aprendizajes logramos trasladar ese enfoque de género de lo organizativo a lo comunitario que nos permitió llegar al territorio, empoderar a mujeres que dentro de su rol nunca habían tenido la posibilidad de participación y de liderazgo, de entender que a través del ejercicio de gestión del riesgo comunitario podían volverse, en, eh, eh, asumir ese rol de liderazgo y adicional a eso generar procesos de empoderamiento de organización comunitaria. We also use the gender approach uh, based on the community. So we try to um, translate the institutional gender approach to the community level. Um, and we, we, did, um, we, we did women empowerment work. Um, um, sorry, I'm lost. Uh, women in these communities had never had the opportunity to um, Um, to lead community risk management processes. Uh, so we did this um, territorial mapping um, to, um, to, to, to make women at the center of this community risk management. Gracias, Florin. Y gracias también a, a la conocer las otras experiencias de trabajo en el, en el subgrupo, logramos implementar una metodología pedagógica en donde involucramos a los niños, niñas y adolescentes del territorio pero más allá de simplemente eh, conocer el portafolio eh, 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 de los mensajes y de la ruta, eh, ellos pudieron participar a través de pintura, a través de eh, eh, la, la estampación de unas camisetas en el proceso de aprehensión del, del conocimiento de los mensajes. And we also learned from uh, good practices of uh, other organizations through the Mine Action Area of Responsibility. Uh, so, for instance, with work uh, with children, uh, we, we learned that it was necessary not only to, um, 
to deliver safety messages, but also make them participate, for instance, in painting um, T-shirts with safety messages and, and this kind of pedagogical approaches. Entonces, ¿cuál es el valor agregado de poder participar en el grupo eh, eh, de la acción integral eh, contra minas antipersonal? Primero, pues que este espacio de socialización nos permitió pues, eh, eh, levantar la mano para poder presentar un proyecto que con recursos del CERF nos fuera adjudicado y poder llegar a un territorio como Chocó, eh, en donde nunca nadie había llegado. Um, segundo, ah, bueno, dale para mí si quieres. Sí. Uh, so for us, the benefits of participating in the main action um, subcluster area of responsibility was first to be able to submit a proposal and uh, and be granted part of the self funding, um, and also to get to Choco, which is a very uh, remote area of Colombia. Segundo, poder identificar en el transcurso de la ejecución del proyecto, gracias a la participación periódica en el subgrupo, la realidad territorial sobre la acción integral contra minas antipersonal, poder conocer de primera mano eh, temas de seguridad, de afectaciones tanto individuales y territoriales, y eso nos permitía medir eh, eh, cuál era la forma o cuál era el siguiente paso a dar para poder estar en, en los territorios con plena, pues con seguridad y con el total acompañamiento pues, de, del subgrupo. And through our participation in the, in the MAAOR, we also learned uh, about the context of Choco and uh, how we could best work there, how we could best access communities there. Um, es, es este espacio es maravilloso porque nos permite compartir eh, con todas las organizaciones eh, civiles las buenas prácticas, uh, las lecciones aprendidas, las estrategias, las metodologías de la, de la, de la AIMA. And we were also able uh, to learn about the best practices and, and lessons learned from uh, other organizations of the sector. Eh, bueno, creemos que podríamos fortalecer, o se puede fortalecer, um, articulando más eh, con las autoridades nacionales eh, todo el ejercicio de la acción integral contra minas antipersonal, que el subgrupo pues, tenga esa apertura para que haya un acercamiento más, más, más preciso con, con las autoridades nacionales de nuestro país. So we think that could be more uh, linkages, more coordination with um, national authorities. Y um, también creemos eh, que es, es importante eh, eh, continuar con la participación que, que el subgrupo pues permita continuar con la participación de otras organizaciones que nos socialicen sus experiencias exitosas porque definitivamente nos permiten aprender y asimismo enriquecer nuestros procesos en territorio. And we're looking forward to more organizations participating in the MAAOR and being able to share best practices so that we can all learn uh, from their experiences. Y para terminar, eh, quisiéramos que dentro del marco de las orientaciones que se espera del subgrupo, pues poder conocer acerca de la implementación de los estándares internacionales frente a la atención integral contra minas antipersonal, a la acción integral contra minas antipersonal, perdón, a, y poder seguir. Eh, eh, teniendo la posibilidad de participar de este grupo, de este tipo de subvenciones con recursos que nos permitan llegar pues, a impactar a más territorios de nuestro país. And uh, what we expect from the MAAR is also um, uh, sharing guidelines and uh, international standards and how to implement them and also uh, keep sharing information on uh, available funding for member organizations. Quisiera terminar agradeciéndoles permitirnos a nosotros como en ONG contarles nuestra experiencia en este importante encuentro, eh, darles las gracias por permitirnos darles a, a conocer CIREC y bueno, a Colombia bienvenidos todos, a CIREC bienvenidos todos. Thank you very much for inviting us to participate in this event and, um, and for um, being able to share with you our experience as a local NGO in Colombia. Eh, estos son mis datos, mi correo electrónico, eh, por si tienen alguna pregunta, eh, con mucho gusto estaremos atentos a responderla. Gracias, gracias, gracias. And feel free to contact Catherine on this email address. 
Thank you so much to both of you, and in particular, uh, Catherine, uh, for your very good presentation. As you see, you know, we meet regularly amongst MAAOR, but mostly with uh, the in-country coordinators. But for this um, consultation and requirements, it, it, we thought important to get a broad spectrum of views, including from uh, local NGOs, which is also the heart at some point, I would say, in some of the places that uh, there are needs in terms of mine action, whether it is implementation and coordination. Thank you so much. And now we switch to the third person to be on this first part. Uh, we are honored uh, to have Mr. Wolfgang Binsail, who uh, is currently the chair of the Mine Action Support Group, I believe since uh, January of this year, and he's the head of the Division for Humanitarian Assistance, uh, Regional Policy and Operation, including Humanitarian Mine Action at the German Federal Foreign Office. Uh, Mr. Binsai comes with also a wealth of experience. Uh, I believe right before he was Minister Councillor at the German Embassy in Kiev, and then he used to work in Moscow, he was posted in Cairo, and much more. Um, Mr. Binsai, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Are you online? We do not hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? We hear you, but can we don't see you. You don't see me. Now I we see have... you. Everything is perfect. Oh, very good. We see you and we hear you. The floor is yours. Thank you so much and welcome. Thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Bruno. Um, and uh, thank you uh, for inviting me to this uh, conference, which is uh, an honor. Uh, in my function of the Mine Action Support Group Chair, um, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to contribute to this discussion from a donor's perspective, of course. Um, speaking about donor's perspective, perhaps we could see the first slide. I have two slides, so don't be afraid. Um, this is uh, the map of uh, the members of the Mine Action Support Group. We are about 30 donor countries. Uh, funding different contexts in mine action all over the world, which you can see here. Uh, the second slide shows the perspective from the affected countries. We can see this here now. Uh, this is a little bit similar to this uh, map that you have distributed uh, in the group. Uh, it has some countries that are not listed on your map because um, we have from donors in some country affected countries which do not have an HRP yet uh, or do not include mine action into the HRP at this uh, moment. Um, now, speaking about HRP, um, uh, we believe that including mine action into the HRP is um, something we very much welcome because mine action is uh, hrp is the place where mine action does belong to um, it gives a humanitarian context to mine action and it allows for an assessment of the specific needs in mine action and it puts these needs close to the needs from other sectors uh, so, uh, it allows for a um, overview of the different humanitarian needs. Um, and um, with this, it also contributes to the practical realization of the Nexus concept, actually. So, linking um, mine action, linking the security issues or security threats to the population, to, other, to the humanitarian uh, questions and also to development issues. I will come back to that in a moment. Um, it, um, including mine action into the HRP also 
opens for uh, new sources of funding in the mine action. Um, it draws the attention of donors to uh, the threats from uh, anti-personnel mines um, and it includes also mine action and it, um, sorry, and it allows for funding by the pooled funds um, such as the Central Emergency Relief Fund, the SURF, and also the um, pooled country-based pooled funds. Um, for donors, it provides more information from the ground from an independent source, which are the United Nations, of course, um, and new instruments for taking action in the mine, mine uh, sector. So it eases our tasks as donors and it allows us um, to concentrate actually on more strategic questions, on priorities like uh, where do we want to contribute with our funding or what activities do we want to fund or which vulnerable groups do we want to support. VPF, it facilitates, uh, facilitates localization in mine action and that is of course one of the uh, central goals in the grand bargain as you know and which this has been mentioned also um, by Fatwa from UNMAS. Um, and mentioned for the host countries um, the provision of an institutionalized mine action structure uh, will create or we hope that this will create uh, an incentive for additional efforts so it contributes to ownership in the mine action sector now how can the area be strengthened uh, there we see a coordinating role of the uh, AOR on different levels, uh, of course, from the donor perspective. On the global level, it might facilitate the synchronization of strategies and to indicate the direction of the most urgent uh, needs, the, the trends in threats or even uh, technological trends. Um, then on the regional level, um, the AOR may contribute to the consistency of uh, approaches to mine action in, in neighboring contexts. This might play, for example, a, a role when you have uh, minefields uh, close to the borderline, on both sides of the borderline, and then to coordinate the approaches to demining um, in two countries, in neighboring countries, this might, might be useful to have the AOR for, for this. Uh, but the most important level probably uh, would be, of course, on the local level. Um, the, the coordination that the AOR can provide on the, on the local level would contextualize mine action, um, address issues of cons conflict sensitivity, for example, uh, and again, identify nexus relationships. So like, uh, which contribution can mine action bring to uh, to the development sector? To buy, for example, by granting access to uh, production means, uh, or uh, what is the relationship uh, in of mine action to uh, the protection of uh, civilians in in a certain humanitarian context? So linking humanitarian issues to the security sector again. Um, yeah, and donors, of course, would be very interested in getting feedback from uh, AOR coordination then uh, on the local level uh, from uh, actually from all the three perspectives. Involving different stakeholders through regular updates on challenges and progress can also uh, contribute to, to strengthen uh, trust in uh, a certain context and this might be particularly valuable in uh, conflict contexts where where trust is a very uh, crucial issue probably um, and perhaps to mention one very specific thing from our um, MASG perspective or as a donor also as a German donor in in the mine action support group uh, we have tried to promote um, the concept of country coalitions. 
this means uh, that brings together donor countries and affected countries in order to give them an additional push, an incentive to uh, to come to the mine-free situation, actually. Um, and um, this effort is a little bit similar to the idea of local um, uh, area of responsibility coordination, actually. Um, it brings together stakeholders uh, and identifies crucial gaps uh, in, uh, in, in a situation, in a threat situation, and then also the appropriate instruments to improve the situation. Um, the local mine action area of responsibility should be, could be an ideal partner of such a country coalition, actually. More generally speaking, the Mine Action AOR would provide an infrastructure uh, on a technical level, whereas the country coalition, then uh, partners, I mean the, the donor and the affected countries, uh, could concentrate on the political and strategic issues. Uh, for example, uh, the AOR could, could um, invite of course, the, the different uh, UN agencies, but also the authorities from the affected countries, uh, the humanitarian partner organizations, the operators, and then also donor embassies, for example, um, uh, and, and then um, uh, promote the discussion on these issues. Um, now, again, I believe that this kind of dis coordination and discussion would have a positive impact on funding as it raises also the awareness among donors, uh, local context, while ideally supporting and fostering national commitment. I would like to eat my appreciation for the invitation in this meeting in my function as MASG chair because I believe it would be very useful to include donors at the coordination table of the AOR in general. Uh, this would allow for communication in both ways, actually. Donors may convey priorities, uh, concerns, um, or changes in policy uh, to the stakeholders, to the mine action community, uh, and to the UN system. And the UN organizations may inform the donors about trends and capacities and available services and resources or convey messages from affected countries. I do recognize that um, the MASG meetings with its open session that, that invites already uh, some uh, central UN agencies in that matter uh, including, of course, UNMAS, but also UNDP and uh, UNIS, um, is a little bit similar to this idea already and, and does implement this idea. But um, it's different to have donors, a donor-centered uh, meeting, and then invite uh, a couple of UN agencies, or to have a stakeholder meeting and then invite donors. The, the messages might be different, uh, and uh, and the setting is different. So we would still encourage to have this the other way around as well. Um, as mentioned at the beginning, I would like to encourage a general inclusion of mine action into the HRPs. In most affected countries, this is already the case, as your map has shown in 16 contexts you, you mentioned, I think. Um, there are some countries where there is a landmine problem, but you don't integrate H uh, mine action into HRP so far. Uh, one is Ethiopia, for example. Um, I know that in Ethiopia there is no mine action for political reasons, so there is probably um, a reason to that. Uh, in Zimbabwe, there is mine action, and uh, still uh, there is no mine action in, in the HRP. Um, so, we would encourage um, mainstreaming in all global uh, or in all contexts where mines play a role in threatening the civilian population. 
So summing up, um, I believe the AOR could help to establish a consolidated plan with a total need for mine action activities around the globe. Um, a very important task. Um, and help donors to decide where to set their priorities. And so meetings like this one, and thank you for holding it and thank you for inviting um could take place on a regular basis i don't know what is your schedule perhaps uh, on a biannual basis or f including the donors or whatever is uh, your preference thank you very much for your time and listening uh thank you so much am i dare to say wolfgang uh mr Binsai. and um I think um, you complete this uh, first part of the discussion and couldn't have been richer with the combination of someone working in both Iraq and Congo, uh, Fadwa, and now um, we've had uh, a local NGO, Katarina from Colombia. Now we are hearing the, a donor's perspective also uh, from the MASG. Um, if I may now, uh, as planned, we're a little bit behind schedule. This is the time, so I'm not sure how we'll get notes to see who are those uh, asking to speak. This is a, a short part of the first discussion on, do you have questions to the panelists? I know I've taken notes, I do have, but I may also keep some of mine, but I would encourage participation from a wide group. I don't know whether Christelle, Kayla, or Daniela can, can show me how, who are the people asking for the floor, or you can even use my personal WhatsApp and tell me who is trying to get. Let me see, I see a view and uh, looking for hands or anyone who wanted to speak. Christelle, you can intervene and let me, uh, uh, help me with who are the people who may want to speak. Let me look for the hands or put a question that you need to speak on the chat function, which is on the side, that little bubble where you can put something to speak. Let me give a few seconds. And finally, Katarina's uh, camera works. Uh, Christelle, we don't hear you. At least I don't hear you. Um, I just wanted to make a, a, a suggestions for people who would like to take the floor. I think you can turn on your camera on. That way we see right away uh, that you would like to speak. And I know that we had a, a couple of colleagues who had already uh, expressed the desire to speak. And I think the first one is Sebastian Kazak from MAG. Sebastian, if you are online, uh, please uh, brief. If you, if you have comments directed to the discussions, please uh, point to whom or general remarks. Thank you so much. You are muted, but I see your lips moving. Okay. Now we've got the technology working. Hi, Bruno. Yes, please. And um, thanks for um, giving me the floor. So in, in my role as um, advisory group co-chair of the Explosive Ordnance Risk Education Advisory Group, um, Crystal asked me to, to take the floor and, and happy to do so. So in our experience on a global level, um, the, the Mine Action AOR has had an added value um, bringing us together with the colleagues from the different countries um, mentioned and um, sharing good practices, learning what the discussion is on the ground, working on data management systems and so on. So this was definitely useful and we could provide our inputs. Um, personally, I think the, the participation also from my own colleagues on the ground is, is uh, rather limited or depends on the situation um, per in the country, but that could be probably improved. And um, maybe from the mine action, um, from the EOR, really AG side, and apologies, um, Hugues Laurent um, cannot participate today, so he asked me also to, to speak on his behalf. 
I mean, we are developing, for example, the an essential training, online training on essential uh, risk education messages. So it's a good forum to, to present these new initiatives as well and get a global buy-in. Similarly, we are working on the standardizing beneficiary definitions and Bruno and colleagues were part of that as well. So um, I think using this forum as well um, to, to share our initiatives is, is worthwhile. Um, obviously, there is a limitation because we are focused on em emergencies. It's the Terrian cluster system. So um, it does not include um, the other countries where we work with uh, that are in a development um, state. And, and uh, Mr. Binzer mentioned this as well. I mean, the next is um, how to include people who are working more in, in these countries may be a bit of a challenge for this type of setup. Thank you. You are muted now, Bruno. I, I wanted to imitate you. You know, Unmas, we always follow the lead from Mag. Uh, listen, uh, <laughs> listen, uh, it seems I see uh, Sophie, you have your hand up, correct? And if you may introduce yourself briefly, and then again, comments or question to the floor, and if you can pinpoint to whom, please. Yes, I'm happy. Sophie. I, I'm not. I, I'm not able to switch on my camera. I don't know why. Um, but but uh, so my name is Anne Sophie Lincoln. I uh, work with ECHO as a thematic expert on uh, protection and gender, and for us that also includes the mine action. Um, and uh, current, well, just taking up a post in in Bangkok actually. Uh, so covering Asia and the Pacific for the coming four years, coming otherwise from the the Middle East. Um, no, I just wanted to uh, to to echo my my German colleague uh, in terms of the of the 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 encouragement to including donors in in either coordination, actual coordination, or at least some form of of let's say regular consultation uh, mechanism. Something that has also been done by the the Global Protection Cluster and has also been ongoing. From both the the child protection and uh, GBVAORs, and I think it it is really a an excellent avenue to to raise uh, the awareness of donors of um, specific protection issues, and and also I think particularly with respect to mine action, because I think for for some donors, and I I can speak also for Echo, sometimes it's a little hard in house to also make understand. To me, mysteriously so, but but why mine action should also be considered under pure humanitarian funding, considering also that it often is very expensive. Uh, so it's, so I think that this is a good way to let's say advocate for the importance of uh, of mine action by better inclusion, a bit more regular engagement of donors, both at global level as well as at field level. Uh, so it was basically that that was my comment. Thank you so much, Anne Sophie. Um, I believe uh, your comments and those of uh, Mr. Binsail are not falling on deaf ears. And in fact, so it, it, it's a first. Uh, we are using, as you know now, the GPC platform for this uh, session. It's a first, and that is why we wanted to open up because we meet regularly amongst ourselves. Um, when I say ourselves, these are the MAA or members globally, and then with in country coordinators, but we hear this issue. Uh, I am here as a moderator as well as the global um, coordinator for MAOR. Um, not to sound too cliche, but why in the humanitarian? Because mine action is humanitarian action. We save lives. So whether it is um, to clear, to allow IDPs and refugees to walk, to allow uh, movements of population, to enable other humanitarian actors. And sometimes the sequencing matters. 
No security, you cannot do humanitarian. No security, you cannot do peace development. I like the point uh, from Wolfgang about Nexus. Uh, I just came back from Congo and then before in uh, West, uh, West Africa and the Sahel, and I worked on a few, uh, uh, the Nexus approach, right? Uh, peace, humanitarian development. It's extremely difficult. In the concept is beautiful, but on the ground, and and oftentimes, and, and I'm being a bit candid, um, there are donors in this meeting. Uh, sometimes they are after what funding to get, but the sequencing is important. But I I, I did hear uh, some of your comments, and um, and so you know we are taking notes. And a commitment that I'm doing as global coordinator, now I'm the hat, uh, because uh, or also with regards to what was said before, uh, uh, with regards to the interaction with the MASG, this is a unique platform. It exists. It's a coordination platform, not only on UN, UN and NGOs and local partners. So it is there. So it might be easier, as you say, to switch the table around and invite folks to, to join in the discussions. Uh, perhaps I can, if some, I'm reading my WhatsApp messages. Um, uh, no, uh, Daniela is saying Sebastian has his hand up. I don't, I don't think Sebastian wants to speak again, or it was an oubli. Uh, Otherwise, I believe a last person, I don't know, let me see here. I don't see a hand. If, if, you, if you want to protest, this is the time. Um, we are above the one hour mark where we were about to take a small break. Uh, Christelle, you can intervene. Uh, if you see a hand that I don't see. Otherwise, I believe if you guys uh, don't mind, this has been a rich session. It's the same one session that we wanted to divide the speakers and a little bit of focus with um, why the importance of coordination and uh, going also into strengthening. And uh, maybe just before um, the... Uh, moving to the next panelist, can I go back to our first speaker? Fadwa, are you there? Uh, I have a question. Sorry to put you on the spot. You have heard from donors also, but you come from Iraq. You come now from Congo, okay? You heard that. Can you give your feedback, and we're not going to hold you accountable or anything, so can you hear, say what you think, and, and I, I took note of all your issues you raised, eh? uh, fantastic. Can you give a few words, almost in response? Merci beaucoup. Are you speaking, Fadwa? Yes, I am sorry. I have two places where I could mute myself and I unmuted myself only in one. <laughs> so um, I was saying uh, thank you, Bruno, for, for calling me on, on answering uh, or responding to some uh, to the comments from uh, our colleagues uh, from the donor community. Um, I think the, the, the donor community have a place um, in helping the humanitarian community to shape um, the response. Uh, but also, I think, um, as uh, my colleague have mentioned, um, it would be also an opportunity to raise awareness among the donor community on the needs for, for the humanitarian mine action uh, activities to happen as an enabling um, activity. And it's always a chicken and egg situation, uh, as you mentioned, you know, where uh, sometimes you need security to be able to provide humanitarian uh, response, but sometimes mine action part of the security um, and stabilization process to enable humanitarian uh, activities to happen. So it's a bit, um, you know, uh, uh, mine action could, is depending on the context, being able to respond to multiple um, needs. That being said, one thing that uh, I'm not sure if it's still happening in, in Afghanistan, and if there's someone uh, representing Afghanistan today, um, uh, please uh, raise your hand and you could confirm with us. 
uh, back in the days, we used to have uh, MASG meetings in country uh, with uh, the donor community that was supporting mine action in, in Afghanistan. And that was also the opportunity for us to have com frank conversation on the humanitarian mine action. Of course, it did not allow um, always the space uh, as recommended uh, by Mr. Vincent to have also uh, humanitarian mine action um, NGOs to be present. But that was that was the uh, most of the time the opportunity for, for us to um, conversation with the, the, the donor community, but also for them to have the conversation together. Now, that being said, uh, most of the donors are part of the humanitarian country team, but mine action issues are some of the issues among all the issues that they have to look at. In Iraq, um, a lot of the donors uh, in the field, uh, in, in Baghdad or Erbil, would come also to some of the national protection uh, cluster meetings. Um, which was a good time, a good opportunity for them to to be accustomed with some of these issues. But when I when I hear um, the the Mr. Vincent and um, uh, our other colleague Sophie, I forgot which country you 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 are um, representing. Uh, apologies for that. I think I think there's it could be quite useful for both the humanitarian community, mine action community, and the donor community to have this. Um, a forum for us openly. Very long answer. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, merci, Fadwa. Um, and, and, and sorry for putting you on the spot. And um, I'm finishing that part. As a former uh, staffer of the World Bank, I think Wolfgang would like to say a few words, if that, yes. So as a former World Bank staff after eight years, and then I decided to move to proper UN. Um, so it is clear to this group, okay? Speaking with donors is not necessarily meaning pitching for the money, but we can pitch for strategic issues and consult with them to get their views. So it's, and, 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 and I mean, look at me right now. I have one foot in the Department of Peacekeeping Operations because that's where UNMAS belongs to. And I have one foot in the humanitarian realm where we are, are, we are doing uh, mine action AOR under the Global Protection Cluster led by UNHCR. To me, I, there's no issue here. Whether we, to some of my colleagues, I will talk about protection of civilians, and to other colleagues, I will talk about centrality of protection, but it's all the same. It's about saving lives and, um, and, 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 and do advocacy, uh, uh, not to trick the donors, but sometimes they can be partners to advocate for us and discuss with us. Uh, I see um, uh, Wolfgang, please. Yeah, thank you, Bruno, and uh, yes, I'm Wolfgang. Uh, um, uh, just to, to answer to the remark from Fatwa regarding uh, the visit in country by the MASG group, um, this is something we uh, that has been done before, and we wanted to take this up. Actually, we had already uh, ready-made plans to visit Ukraine. Uh, in now, actually, in October, to have the MASG meeting in Kiev or then visit the contact line there, um, because we also deem it very useful to uh, give the representatives of donors a direct uh, view of what is happening on the ground. I think th th it's it's all in in the minds of the people, you know, uh, to to have an idea of what what you are doing and what your the money you are giving uh, is actually providing for. Uh, so um, that was our idea. Unfortunately, uh, it was cut short by uh, the the pandemic. Um, the day this will be over, hopefully, we will pick the idea up again. Thank you. That was all. Uh, thank you so much, Wolfgang. And on behalf of the mine action uh, area of responsibility, uh, this is now also an open invitation to visit us uh, eventually um, in country or at the global level 
uh, this is an open invitation. And uh, I don't know whether you know this meeting, this forum was meant to be pre-COVID in, I think in Bangkok, Christelle, if I'm not mistaken. But now this is the best you get to see the field. Uh, you know, we had Colombia, uh, Congo, but a point well taken. Let me check with, I, I think we need a little stretch break. Uh, Richard, I see your remark about you cannot uh, hang, uh, putting the hands up. Given you will be speaking after, you want to hold that to your point later, or you want to intervene very briefly before people have a five minute stretch break? No, I know how that works. I'll uh, hold my point later. Thank you so much. So, guys, how about a really quick break, very short, and we meet at 3.30? Like in four or five minutes, you you have time to do private stuff. Thank you. I'll see you very soon.
We are on the break. We are about to reconnect. Uh, apparently, some of us are hearing music. Some of us are not hearing music. Uh, Daniela, can I can you connect? And I want to hear your audio and your video, please. We are about to start the second part. I'm not sure if Daniela is back on. Let me check. Uh, Kayla, can you hear or see me? Hi, Kayla, can you hear or see me? Yes, apologies. Don't apologize. Thank you. <laughs> No, no worries. Uh, 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 Kayla, uh, while we were on break, we are about to start the second part of the session. Um, could you hear the music? No, I could not hear the music. Okay, there was music in my head. I'm Unfortunately. Sorry <laughs> so, but thank you so much. So let's move on uh, without uh, further ado to the second part of that same one session, which is part of the Global Protection Forum. And uh, we have uh, another series of three uh, speakers, again, from different horizons. I am pleased now to be connected to Syria. Uh, from Damascus, we have the pleasure of uh, introducing Francesca Caudani, who is a Syria Mine Action AOR coordinator. Um, to let everybody know, I'm sitting in her office because she used to work in Unmas Geneva before. She's been going around. I know she was in Mali and uh, many other things. So Francesca, uh, hopefully connection stands. You can start by putting your video on. I know we had some issues before. We are happy to hear from you. To all those who are rejoining, we are in part two of that session. Uh, technically how to strengthen the Mine Action AOR, and we are continuing the session. Francesca, the floor is yours. Thank you, Bruno. And as you said, I hope connection stays and that you can all hear and see me. Uh, so thanks again to you, Christelle, for um, inviting me to be part of this panel. And also thanks to all of you who are joining us online. It's nice to see some familiar names through the, the chat box and the list of participants. So really uh, very much looking forward to exchanging with you uh, after. So um, if we can, without further ado, exactly. Thank you, Daniela, <laughs> for a nice uh, intro to the, the first slide. Um, as Bruno introduced me, my name is Francesca. I'm the Mine Action AR coordinate, coordinator for Syria based in Damascus. So um, through, through my presentation today, which I, I'll try my best to keep as short as possible to leave more time for, for the exchanges and debate, I'll be sharing with you some of my reflection and experience from, from coordination in Syria and hopefully providing you with some food for thought for the guiding theme of the second part of our discussion, which is uh, how to strengthen the mine action AUR. So I'll first provide you just like a quick overview of how the, mine act, how the humanitarian architecture works in Syria as, as some quite specific uh, features and also how the mine action AUR fits into the broader um, humanitarian architecture. And then, as I said, uh, I'll conclude with some reflection from my experience so far and hopefully this will um, help you provide you some inspiration or some food for thought for, for the discussion. So if we can move to the next slide. As I said, so just to provide a bit of a background for those of you who are not familiar, uh, this slide gives a bit of an overview of the humanitarian arrangement for Syria. And I'm really sorry, very poor graphic skills from my side. <laughs> 
But if we look at this at the slide uh, in front of you, so we can um, we can say that the, the humanitarian response in Syria is structured around what different layers, so to say. So if we start from the bottom, uh, we have an operational um, level which is um, organized around the hubs of operation, namely you have Turkey hub, a Syria hub, and, and a northeast hub, which is uh, coordinated by uh, an NGO for you. And then you have a sort of overarching um, layer of coordination, which is uh, referred to as whole of Syria. Uh, in, pr in practice, at least in my view, uh, act as a sort of a soundboard for all policy making and, and overall coordination matters. And uh, it is at the whole of Syria level that um, we, we coordinate the humanitarian program cycle, so the HNO and HFE, to, to be clear. And obviously, is in line with all the humanitarian response structure at the top, you have the humanitarian leadership, which is also uh, physically distributed across uh, uh, different locations. So you, you have a humanitarian coordinator sitting in Damascus, a regional humanitarian coordinator sitting in Amman, and a deputy sitting in Gaziantep in Turkey. This is just very briefly, and I won't go into much details, but just to give you a bit of an overview of how the humanitarian coordination is to introduce, so if we can move to the next slide then. Um, and right, right, so how does the mine action uh, um, AUR coordination fits into this uh, uh, layered response and, and structures? In terms of mine action presence, uh, we, um, we currently have a, a mine action subcluster active under the protection cluster in the Turkey hub, so in Gaziantep, which is co-lead co by ANMAS and the Halo Trust at the moment. Then we have a mine action subsector activated uh, uh, quite recently, if I can say, so just last year, in Damascus. This is uh, where I'm currently sitting now. So, and we also have a mine action working group uh, uh, for Northeast hub. Uh, under the NGO forum that's a uh, coordinated response over there. So this is just to give you a bit of an, uh, an idea of how the landscape is for, co for mine action coordination in Syria. Uh, it's quite complex, overlaid, and many, many actors and stakeholders involved. Uh, so just to give you an idea, for instance, when we have to build now consolidate narrative for HNO and, and HFP, all these hubs that you see circling this in this slide have, need to have need need to be consulted and then eventually the narrative is coordinated among all, all the people that are represented by this circle there. Um, I think uh, we'll just conclude this brief overview and I don't want to overload you with too much information. If we can move to the next slide, please, Daniela. So in terms of some numbers and how does the overall mine action response look like in Syria, and the numbers that you see here are, as I said, a consolidation of these three bubbles and three um, hubs of operation that you previously see pictured in the, in the map. So um, explosive ordnance contamination is a very huge problem in Syria and a major protection concern across the country. Um, data that we collected uh, for this year estimates that uh, around one in two people in Syria are living in areas potentially contaminated by explosive hazard, which is uh, massive. And for 2020, the, um, altogether the mine action AUR is uh, asking 52 million uh, for the implementation of mine, uh, humanitarian mine action intervention. And uh, to up, to, up to now, so up to July 2020, only 15% has been funded. Uh, there's been quite significant delays because of uh, COVID-19, uh, quite the uh, impacted operation, but uh, um, now um, deliveries of services as resumes. This is uh, more, more than ever needed. Uh, I think I've, talked en enough about the, the overall uh, scene and, and coordination, so if we can move to the, to the next slide and perhaps the most uh, interesting part of, uh, of, of my presentation. Yes, as I said, um, uh, for, for the purpose of this meeting, I've tried to reflect a bit on my experience so far 
coordinate, coordinating the mine action anywhere in Syria. And I've tried to, to come up with the, some, some practical reflection on what I see that worked, what I see that was a bit challenging. And I, as you can see in front of you in the slide, I've overlaid this, my reflection into a SWOT analysis framework, just like to have a little bit of a more um, structured framework for, for analysis. <laughs> So I'll, uh, I'll just uh, touch uh, upon some of these points. I'm not going to cover all uh, just for the sake of time, but um, to start with, uh, uh, with some positive note of what I think uh, helped strengthening the AUR here in Syria, which I, I think could also be of a food for thought for, for global AUR or for other AUR across, across the globe, is that uh, um, having strong relationship and not just in terms of work, personal working relationship, but actually being very much involved in protection sector and protection cluster um, discussion and also constantly communicating with the other AUR, child protection and GBV, was a, a very strong point that, that helped position in mine action uh, in the humanitarian response. And this has been particularly uh, helpful when we set up uh, the subsector in Damascus that I men just mentioned before was actually activated last year. So having, having this really strong connection uh, with, with the protection sector colleagues and, and with the AUR colleagues really helped um, positioning us and strengthening the AUR in country. And then something also that I found very, very helpful and a good strength. And I think also um, Catherine in, in her presentation before us mentioned that the peer exchanges um, with, the, with other AUR member help there, but also for, for my experience so far, having, uh, having AUR mem member that are, are very strongly operationally oriented and a very strong operation background also helped uh, um, establish the AUR and strengthening the presence within the overall humanitarian response. Um, now, in, uh, moving on to something that uh, we are working on and I see it as a, as a big opportunity, not just for, for the AUR in Syria, but also uh, globally. Uh, definitely, as we, as we often say, mine action is an enabler. And, and without mine action, many, many activities, including uh, life-saving delivery of humanitarian aid cannot, cannot happen, especially in, in contexts where there, there is high explosive ordinance contamination. So pitching on this, um, on, on this fact that mine action is actually cross -cut, a cross-cutting priority and an enabler for, uh, for broader humanitarian activities is to me a, a, a very significant opportunity and a buy-in to create synergies with, with other sector and, and the other AUR. Um, I can bring some examples from, from Syria so far. So for instance, uh, just recently we've been discussing on the impact of explosive contamination on school. And this led to further discussion with the education colleagues and child protection colleagues to, to try and, and analyze a little bit better in, in a more structured framework, what are the impact of, uh, of the explosive contamination on children and on education. And, and this eventually led to some mine action language being included in the education part in the 2020 HFP, which in, by the way is still in draft. If you uh, if, if you wonder why you haven't seen it uh, online, it's still uh, yet to be published. But uh, this is just one example, and also definitely uh, we were very pleased to see the initiative at global level regarding the collaboration between the mine action and child protection AUR. This is something that uh, at field level we've also been discussing with our colleagues here, and it's, and, uh, it's definitely an opportunity to further strengthen um, the AUR presence in country. Now, just very briefly on some perhaps more negative note, um, I think one, one weakness or one sort of um, point for improvement or as a takeaway for further strengthening uh, field coordination, but also I think overall uh, mine action presence in country is that uh, oft, often we, we, we don't have a specific profile or like as a mine action coordinator, humanitarian coordinator. So, um, and this is, uh, this is the case, not just for, for those of us who are posted with ANMAS, but I've seen also with, uh, for instance, our, our colleague here uh, for, um, for the Turkey Hub, but also in other, in, in other partners, there's, uh, 
there's no such a, a profile as a 100% coordinated function. M many, many of us are acting on, on, a, on a program officer role, for instance. So while most of our daily activity are dedicated to, to coordination, um, it's not 100%. And this, this has, a, has a, ne a slightly negative impact on the, F, on the actual resources and time that we can dedicate to coordination. Because it has to be said that coordination is primarily a human resource heavy activities, so, well, as opposed to other types of humanitarian mine action activities, especially on the operation side, like we don't really require a lot of expensive equipment, but we do require hands and people. And that's, uh, that's sometimes a bit challenging, especially in, in, uh, in countries uh, such as such as Syria here, you've seen how complex the the structure is, and and how it in theory requires a lot of time and effort. So having uh, having like an extra or a team dedicated just to coordination or extra support uh, could be very helpful. So and this links also to the other point I, I noted down. So if we uh, com comparing also to other um, other sector or other AUR, it would. Uh, it, uh, it would be very helpful or in general knowing that we can rely on a, a sort of surge capacity support. So more, more support in terms of uh, human resource side, but also peer, peer exchange among, um, among the different AORs. So actually having uh, support from, from other colleagues who may have experienced similar, similar processes. Then uh, uh, if we just move to the next slide so just to sum up uh, very briefly um in terms of what what i i took as food for thought or the takeaway from my experience so far in, in coordinating mine action here is so strengthening the mine action aur um, in my in my opinion would mean that uh, you definitely would need the global guidelines and SPs, and this has been also um, mentioned by the previous speaker in, in the previous session, but uh, having a sort of framework that we can refer to when setting up an um, operation at field level, that, that would definitely strengthen our position in, within the country and within the broader humanitarian setting. Then uh, I, I think also having, as I said, having a place where we can consult of these global guidelines or SOP, but also having a broader space where, where to look for advice and guidance from all countries that would also help strengthening a coordination at speed level, particularly in, in, post, in countries or in, in operation where there's a high turnover of staff. So when, when you have uh, people who have, may not be familiar with coordination or may not be familiar with, um, with the country, you know there's a place uh, to look for guidance and document. Uh, it could be um, a help desk or an online library, which is broader than, uh, I mean, no, we, we, we do have some existing um, specific one, for instance, for the Explosive Ordnance Risk Education Group, but having one specific for coordination and coordination guidance uh, that, I, in my opinion, would be something very useful to, to strengthen capacity at local level in terms of coordination. Um, then, just to recap the point I just said, um, search capacity or support, having peer, sort of uh, institutionalized or, or more easier evolving um, search capacity or, or support or knowing um, have institutionalized the way of, of asking for support that would also strengthen um, what we can do and, and increase the capacity in country of uh, having ex, extra pay of hand <laughs> helping uh, putting together documents uh, and, and having yeah, an, an, extra, an extra aid for, for improving and again strengthening the, um, the mine action presence in a country. And then last but not least, because I think that's also perhaps one of the most important points, definitely strategic partnership and from a um, global setting, but then pulling down at, at the field level is uh, something that's paramount to, to establish a mine action, uh, mine action position within a field humanitarian response, but also over, overall 
as a as I said as underlying the importance of, of mine action within in the humanitarian response. Um, I think I'll stop here, but I'm very much looking forward to hearing some, some of the feedback from colleagues on the on the meeting today. Thank you. Over to you, Bruno. Thank you, Francesca. Uh, <clears throat> very insightful. Um, I'm not going to comment on comments right now, that's on my role, but I have to tell you what resonates with me, whatever you are going through, uh, I would not say the same, but similar, this issue of not having dedicated uh, functions as coordinators, we feel it at the global level as well, and I still see your slide on. Um, we will look into those uh, proposals to, to see how to strengthen and um, but, but very, very good points. And then now let's let's go uh, forward and we will collect everybody's points. Uh, I, uh, how do you say? Grazie mille. The next speaker uh, is Richard McCormack, um, who is the head of the Danish uh, demining group. I believe um, he took his uh, position as head of the group in uh, 2017, and uh, since then he has um, uh, overseen DDG's establishment as the humanitarian disarmament and peace building pillar within uh, the broader Danish Refugee Council. Uh, lots of experience as well as the other ones joined the humanitarian sector in 2011 and uh, then i don't know whether it's a secret or not but before he used to be a fighter pilot uh in the royal air force and he's worked in and was deployed in several areas including the middle east the Balkans, and africa enough enough, enough. i can make it longer if you want um, thank you so much. Sorry, uh, please, sorry. we look forward to hearing from you. And one last important point uh, to tell everybody in this global setting, uh, we are so pleased that uh, your organization is, uh, uh, I would say, strengthening the coordination of this platform by being a co-coordinator and you are looking into bringing somebody on board. Thank you. Richard, the floor is yours. <clears throat> Thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Bruno. And um, uh, um, I just want to underline that I'm um, I'm speaking as the head of DDG uh, here, and not as you know from the, the vantage point of um, a co-coordinator or or, uh, or anything else. Um, so uh, the um, uh, the bit in the intro about um, DDG. Um, uh, being a a, a a sector and a and a, having a place within a, a broader mission um, that has a, a focus on uh, on uh, displacement, I think is is relevant to some of the discussion that perhaps we'll get into later on. Um, in in uh, in in approaching this, um, I, uh, I have a number of views of my own um, on. The uh, uh, the uh, uh, the value added of the of the MAAOR generally at uh, global level and uh, and and fee level and also um, um, uh, uh, on, on gaps and capacities and so forth. But but I thought it would be interesting um, look you know to to give some come to some input here from the vantage point of an INGO that is a mine action operator, uh, which is what I'm trying to do, and take some soundings from within our own organisation. Um, from um, uh, people across the, uh, the the countries within which we work, um, and uh, I make no apology if just for for putting them forward as uh, as as just raw material for for discussion. So I'd like to talk a little bit about you know the the comments that I got from that internal uh, survey and and people's perceptions, um, and uh, and perhaps a little bit about some of the gaps and uh, uh, that that were mentioned and that came up. Uh, the Predominantly, uh, the, the focus was at, was at, at, at field level, um, and then touch on uh, the uh, what I think perhaps is the more interesting longer term discussion, which is at the global level, uh, where are we going, and, uh, and and uh, and 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 you know what what can be done and what's and what's coming up. So it splits into two sort of areas. Um, 
and uh, we can take a discussion after that. Maybe if I start with the the, the comments and uh, so forth that I received back internally from from the uh, respondents, uh, lots and lots of appreciation um, about uh, the MA AOR at uh, at regional at uh, and a country level, um, and uh, people felt that uh, the MA had been particularly successful and was particularly useful in um, in a number of areas, and they wanted to see more effort in in these effort these areas, and they, uh, and, and this is where the value added. The perceived value added is at field level, um, and that's in relation with uh, national authorities and national mine action uh, agencies, and uh, in particular advocating for the sector amongst local coordination mechanisms, uh, ensuring that, uh, that that mine action has its place within humanitarian response plans, uh, and, uh, uh, and and securing the visibility of the sector. That was viewed as massively important. It is a success uh, that we've made, been able to do that uh, it requires ongoing work and uh, and uh, and people thought it was um, uh, it was hugely important that 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 focus was was maintained uh, and without it uh, they, they felt we'd be in a very very poor place so the the MAA AORs uh, certainly at, at local country and you know and regional level are are um, by and large um, seen as, uh, as as hugely important and uh, and, uh, and and um, and great Value uh, added. Um, the um, uh, points that came up um, in terms of uh, uh, potential gaps or things that one would need to focus on, uh, apart from those four, you know, relations, uh, advocacy, visibility, and uh, and, and funding uh, that that came through time and time again. Um, can more be done in terms of um, uh, training and capacity building, and we've heard of that touched uh, on already in uh, some of the other uh, presentations. Uh, can more be done within the um, the HLP area, uh, and 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 in terms of uh, protection, in particular with uh, vis a vis uh, returnees, um, and uh, uh, and I think that those comments came from. Uh, scenarios and um, and areas where people are planning and actively looking for large scale returns or, or that sort of thing is on the, the agenda. And I would say that coming from a displacement focused organisation, but uh, but it certainly came up from the field and people thinking at, looking obviously at Syria, at uh, at, uh, at uh, uh, Turkey and and displaced uh, populations in there. My, there is a particular connection between mine action and displacement um, uh, that. That, uh, that that our people certainly brought out, and maybe there's there's more thinking to be done in that area. Um, a request for um, you know activity uh, actor activity mapping. Sorry about the cuckoo clock; it's in uh, the background working at home now. Um, uh, report sharing and general await, awareness raising. There was uh, a sense that uh, that. That, that that some areas um, it, it was particularly difficult, or it could be. Um, uh, uh, um, we've just heard from Syria. I think Libya, perhaps, is another area that is uh, that is that is particularly challenging in terms of getting presence on the ground. Having a, you know, there's an absence of uh, of a coordinated uh, there, and uh, and and I think that 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 gap is is felt. So lots and lots of things there, um, um, which I don't think uh, anybody would be very surprised over. Um, and then it came to the global level, and uh, uh, the the. The, by and large, there was uh, um, uh, it was it was striking um, how many of our field-based staff have uh, little to no awareness of uh, what goes on at the global level or what that role might be. Um, those that were a little bit uh, better informed uh, picked up on uh, the explosive ordnance risk education piece, uh, which I thought was valuable, um, and the work that has been done on victim assistance. Um, and uh, thought that, that more could be done again uh, in rooting us uh, uh, properly within uh, broader, you know, HLP uh, um, uh, thinking, information sharing across those sectors, in particular cross 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 fertilisation across the uh, the various clusters, um, and um, and then the the large body of the Kirk uh, had 
had had no real idea about what goes on in Geneva, to be fair. Um, and uh, and 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 uh, the comment, you know, it is a distant and opaque piece of machinery in uh, in somewhere in Europe uh, came back, and and I I spent some time wondering about that, and um, two things came out of it. Um, firstly, you know, the so what of that is I, actually I'm not sure that that's a problem, uh, because if you if you were to move the Geneva piece uh, and what's been done at the global level, none of what I spoke about before at the uh, at, at the at the country level, uh, that sort of focus at, uh, in in local uh, response architectures and, and uh, so forth, none of that really would be. Uh, the, the the litmus test of uh, of the global the, the value added and the importance of the global level um, AOR is is in uh, in generating you know, is what would happen if if it were removed uh, and it's it, for me i think it's uh that, that that's all about the voice and profile of the sector uh within broader uh fora and putting uh, uh sector voices on the map uh not just from unmass side and the un side but but in particular from uh uh the uh the ngo component uh, that that is that is part of that uh, that uh, uh, MAAOR uh, membership is very important that, that we have a joint profile, joint voices, and, and the AOR itself is not perceived as just being the voice of uh, uh, some sort of you know UN structure. Um, so I think that's that's of value. Um, the uh, uh, um, with that in mind, um, I this is perhaps where you and I would diverge a little bit, uh, Bruno. Uh, hearing the, the 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 discussions we had before. Um, I think um, we need to be looking a little bit more about uh, about uh, not just our placing within the the, the you know the, the the structure that is the, the cluster system uh, and the, the protection cluster within that and coordination mechanisms across that uh, structure. But there is a very live and active debate that's going on right now, and we touched on it just briefly before uh, with some uh, talk of the, uh, the 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 nexus planning. Um, and in a sense, I think one of the challenges we have is that uh, it, it comes from our success within that protection um, uh, structure as the MAAR within the protection um, uh, cluster is that there is a sense that, you know, mine action just belongs to the protection cluster. It is, it just sits there, that's it. And and it, it is purely, uh, purely humanitarian and it goes no further. Um, and we are in danger of, Losing out on a, on a debate that may actually change the the uh, that cluster system itself in time, um, which is this this whole nexus thing and where that's going. Um, and I think we should be very alive to that, um, and uh, and and looking to the future, uh, pick up on things like the uh, you know the the the, the, the recommendations that have just gone to uh, the uh, OEC countries on 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 DAC, but there should be better coordination across. The nexus, so protection, economic recovery, and peace building, humanitarian disarmament, or or the peace cluster, cluster better programming across all of those areas, and better financing across all of those areas. So that I think is the is the challenge, and that's where I think for Geneva and and the global level uh, in the MAOR can add real value is in is in 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 plugging into that debate and getting the sectors. Uh, presence felt in that debate. It, it, it. For me, my action has a uh, a role to play, not just in uh, in in response terms in in a in a, in a protection environment, uh, but also in economic recovery and also in uh, in as you touched on yourself uh, and others have touched on in in uh, uh, peace building uh, and disarmament circles. Um, and I think there's growing recognition that um, there isn't uh, necessarily a linear. March from um, a response to early recovery to et cetera, et cetera. But these things happen all at the same time. And if if we are we are thinking that way now, I think the likelihood is that the the community at large will start to evolve structures that more reflect that way of thinking in future. And I I would I would challenge uh, the global level of the AOR to be plugged into that debate and to be taking part in it. Um, uh, and I think there will be if we start doing that. Uh, Fairly soon, that would be some some real uh, value added. It would be a shame to let those those ideas and those structures and that thinking uh, come into being without a without a um, a firm MA 
uh, what is currently MA AOR uh, voice and, and presence in that. I think also uh, uh, that was point about um, about localization is uh, is incredibly important looking into the future, um, and uh, and I I don't think that that's going to go away. Um, so I, rec I would echo that as well. So I think it, it broadly divides into a, a very very strategic piece uh, in terms of you know gaps and, and capacities and where should we be going. Um, and uh, very, very clear and very firm recognition at field level of of the achievements and what's happened in the local and country sector uh, coordination mechanisms. Yes, there are there are there are there are gaps in capacity. Yes, there's more that could be done with um, with uh, um, uh, 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 surge capacity. Um, sharing, report sharing, activity mapping, all of any num one of a number of things. Um, and I think we're alive to to uh, to most of those. Um, uh, the uh, uh, for me, I think the the, the more interesting uh, uh, discussion is is the visibility of the strategic piece. Where do we go in the longer term, and and when there are challenges or or, or calls out to coordinate and program and finance across the entirety of uh, of uh, of Nexus thinking. Where do we fit in that, and how do we respond to that? Um, so um, I'm not sure if that's answered any questions at all, or just uh, just created confusion um, or or points for for discussion. But um, but that's uh, a, a range of views informed by a little internal survey within uh, DDG, or rather the humanitarian disarmament and peacebuilding piece of uh, the Danish Refugee Council. Um, I'll stop there, and um, I hope I haven't provoked too much, and uh, hand back over to you, Bruno. Thank you so much, Richard. Um, I like diverging views. Uh, <laughs> give me more. Um, no, I, again, on, honestly, wh where I'm sitting, um, I see complementarity. I see also the limitations of what can be done. Uh, again, I'm just going to be the, the moderator. Maybe the, the next speaker can may have a, a, a different uh, angle, but I don't know. Uh, of course, I don't know his talking points. But thank you so much even to have taken the extra step of consulting with your colleagues. And I think it's it's adding to the richness of this is a consultation. And, 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 and the more we get views, and we don't have to agree now. Right now, we are collecting, opening all the doors. And, 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 and I really thank you for your views. And hopefully, again, we won't solve the whole world of my nation in the next few minutes. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to, to, to collate or somehow we will see what to do uh, with all the views uh, that we are. And I don't think one, what you're saying is negating anything I was saying. I think it's, it's going to be a matter of focus. What do you do first? How do you prioritize? Um, um, inc including how to operate in this nexus uh, environment. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Richard. Let's go to the final speaker of, of uh, today's session, who with the dotted line in the global protection cluster is our boss, William Chemerly, who is the coordinator, and we are so happy to have him on board. Uh, many of you within the protection realm would know of him. Uh, he's been a senior policy advisor in uh, UNHCR, ha has been working at, in the Global Compact on Refugees, uh, was in OCHA before. By the way, my national service of UN was in OCHA before. I'm not sure whether there's a link to Richard or not, he also served in the Danish Refugee Council in Geneva and his work uh, in several places, including uh, in several countries of Africa. I'm pleased to have the final discussant. William, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Bruno. Can you hear me and see me well? We, I see both. Is it my eyes or is there a light shining on your head? It's with, aura with, from the skies. I, I love it. Please <laughs> car carry on. We see you, we hear you. It's, it's lovely. Go ahead, please. It's very good. What an excellent discussion. Uh, thank you, Bruno, for this dynamic interaction and, and to all the present presenters. Um, I would like to start by thanking uh, Humanity and Inclusion for an excellent 
spring uh, you had uh, with the cluster. Uh, and a big, big welcome uh, to the Danish demining group. I have a soft spot for mine action. Uh, in a previous life, I represented the Danish demining group in Geneva, and uh, that was an addictive window of exposure uh, to mine action and, and disarmament uh, broadly. First, uh, let me start with a simple message. I love the no bullshit attitude of mine action professionals and practitioners. Uh, I love the mathematical dimension of the logic. One plus one equals two. There's something that goes boom. If we don't remove it, it will go boom. Someone will get hurt. Someone will not go to school. Someone will lose their job. Someone will lose a child or a parent. Someone will be traumatized. So the mathematical simplicity is uh, it's rare. I say that from, uh, from my broader portfolio, it's much uh, it's very rare to have this simplicity in other aspects of protection work, and uh, I, I like that. Uh, should we invest in removing what goes boom or deal with assisting the victims and dealing with the trauma and a generation without schools and families without livelihood and all of this? Unfortunately, the, the answer to that question should be simple. We should invest in removing what was what was goes boom or not have it in the first place. But common sense is not often so common uh, in conflicts, and this is why we need more of the attitude of the mine action actors. Second, uh, attitude is not the only element of mine action that is uh, very interesting and important for broader protection work. I would like to highlight four areas uh, where the mine action community are ahead or positioned to be ahead of the rest of protection action, and we need to learn from you. Meaning, we really need you to get really good at them and help the rest of the areas of protection, of specialization, of responsibility to catch up. First, as clearly mentioned by many speakers, you are at the center of, this, of the nexus. Uh, it couldn't be more evident. You are 100% humanitarian, 100% development, 100% peace, 100% stabilization. Uh, lead the way in integrating mine action in development, peace, planning, and programming and operations. And make sure to get the resources from, from the variety of pots and, and resource possibilities this provides and teach the rest of us how to do this in terms of understanding the timing and the language and the arguments and, and, and the planning logic that needs to be there. So you are at the center of the nexus. Lead us with you to really professionalize our attitude to that. Second, you are at the center of localization. You can lecture me about it. So bring that knowledge in working with local authorities so other areas of protection can benefit from it, benefit from the networks you build and the know-how of how to build these networks and maintain them and work with them. You're ahead. You have decades of, uh, of, of steps as a community uh, in this area, and, and many other parts of protection are trying to catch up. So. I, I wish to, to see the, the, uh, you rise to, to the role, not only of doing it really well, because you do, but also uh, do the investment of taking it and helping others to catch up with you. Third, you are at the center of community engagement. I mean, community engagement in, in the last six months is, a, is the golden currency in places where we have limited access, where COVID is spread, where stigmatization and other protection challenges are all over. We need to learn from you on how to build these networks, how to maintain them, how to give them information and take information from them, how to work with them. Uh, again, this is an area where you're ahead and we need you to, 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 re, to bring that maturity of knowledge and know-how and tools to the rest of the community. Uh, and finally, and my fourth point is that you are experts on cross-sectoral programming. I mean, this is your bread and butter. Integrated analysis and planning, uh, you know, with health, with livelihoods, with food security, with education. 
uh, you are much better connected than many other areas of protection. And we need to understand how we do that, how we can build on your knowledge and how to take it forward. So my inputs, as you see with my four points are not uh, really uh, what your guidance should be uh, for yourself only. It's what your guidance should be for the rest of the community. And I'm talking here to, to, to call on you to rise to be that protection actor beyond mine action that brings this positioning, know-how, and expertise to the wider protection and the humanitarian world. Member states uh, is an important question. And here, let me be clear. Uh, uh, protection is bigger than the protection cluster itself. Protection is bigger than the humanitarian action. To have real protection outcomes, we do need protection, protection and humanitarian work. But we also need protection to be recognized as central as well in development and peace action. So I hear you loud and clear, uh, Richard. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, member states are equally accountable to centrality of protection and humanitarian action and supporting us to make sure protection is recognized as central in development and peace. So uh, come on, come join us. We in the GPC have uh, member states seconding people to our teams uh, like NGOs, like UN agencies. We encourage that, we serve as a model for that and we hope uh, that we see more of that in the mine action AOR. And finally, uh, a special call for UNMAS. Uh, we need to see UNMAS flexing more of its bridge, bridging muscles between a humanitarian protection and the whole development political stabilization linkages and mandates you have to bring that to, uh, uh, to a nice, comfortable narrative uh, where the discussion is no longer where should my action fit, but uh, bringing how can my action contribute uh, to, to getting protection outcomes through a stabilization, a development, a political and a humanitarian lens. So I stop here and thank you, Bruno, and thank you all for a wonderful discussion today. Thank you so much, William. Now I have a problem. Because I think after this segment, you should have been the closing remarks, or we can play the tape of you closing this meeting. Um, jokes aside, thank you so much. Um, hopefully, you won't get into the MAOR's head. Um, there are two sides to any coin. Uh, thank you for telling us uh, what I think we do well what we could do more of and I, I and, and we have a lot to deal with based on this uh session um uh whether we go i, I might now we're going to coin this term uh, richard's way william way uh wolfgang's way or uh or a combination thereof and and uh, we're not at the closing remarks yet, I, I, but I would like to hear, uh, we've heard in that, in that second part, you know, again, INGO, Syria MAOR coordinator, and you from the uh, uh, global level coordinator of the protection. And I like this also, this approach also of, 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 of what is uh, protection. Um, so let me open up uh, for some remarks you may have i know it's we are uh coming uh, making it close on time but i want to open it up for questions um i've not been able to figure out how to press the hands up thing and so you can put a question in chat and i'm checking on my whatsapp if uh, christelle can also christelle kayla and um and daniela uh give me uh, names um i think now uh christelle is telling me there is bill who wants to take the floor but if bill could introduce themselves uh it could be bill mounts ken or somebody else uh please go ahead bill 
Thank you very much, Bruno, and thank you, Christelle, for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Um, we I'm working on a small piece of work with the uh, cash task team on cash protection from the Global Protection Cluster, looking at cash and voucher assistance in humanitarian mine action. It's one of a series of consultations aiming to highlight how cash can be used as a tool to improve protection outcomes for survivors of explosive ordnance incidents or their families. The, the others are including child protection, global uh, gen, 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 sorry, gender based violence, and a recent publication of Taking Stock of Cash and Voucher Assistance for Protection in Humanitarian Settings. And I think the conversation that Wolfgang and William have raised is looking at where mine action can lead into other act activities that, that, that achieve a great outcome. And I'm hoping that this small piece of work will contribute to that dialogue, that discussion. Um, I've been set a task of six research questions. The first is a little bit historical. How has cash and voucher assistance been used to achieve or to contribute to humanitarian mine action outcomes? How have marginalized populations, including women, girls, persons living with disabilities, been effectively served or overlooked within the use of cash and voucher assistance? targeted for all inclusive and mine action outcomes? And to what extent have the specific vulnerabilities and needs of individuals affected by exploded ordnance, directly or indirectly, short or long term, been reflected in other cash and voucher uh, assistance interventions, considering access targeting criteria and referrals? So that's a little bit of the historical part of it, but I think what is increasingly obvious from the conversations today and the work that we started um, is that the subsequent questions are, are perhaps more important. Is cash and voucher assistance considered to support mine action outcomes? And if not, why not? What are the barriers to uptake and scaling of cash and voucher assistance for mine action outcomes where appropriate? And then what are the major opportunities or promising practices and limitations of cash and voucher assistance in addressing mine action outcomes? And what further research or proving of concept is required to inform increasingly effective use of cash and voucher assistance for mine action outcomes? We can see from the fifth question that we would like to look at what we could or should do be doing more of. And the sixth question is making this really clear that we don't just want a report from this research, but we would like to suggest some practical piloting, proving of concepts in a few countries in the very near future. So I'm very interested to talk to members of the Mine Action Area of Responsibility, to national Mine Action authorities, and to agencies that are currently looking at how they can expand the impact of Mine Action to reaching the most vulnerable people in the communities where they work. This is the sort of information that I'm liking, like looking, looking to collect, and this could be by people sharing um, into emails with me or by having a conversation which we can arrange over the next 10 days. We've asked a significant number of mine action authorities, um, victim assistance associations. We have reached some. We haven't had replies from very many. The bold ones here are the ones that the conversation has started with. The non-bold ones are the ones that we're hoping to be able to get some response and some input. As you can see, there's still a lot of work to do. Um, it will be a report we want to produce. It should be practical and forward-looking. It'll be brief and it should be available by the end of the year. So I'm hoping very much that we can continue to funnel information in, that I can process it and produce a, this small, lightweight and practical document before the end of this year. And if anybody has anything that they think I should know, please assume that I don't know it. And I would look forward to hearing from you on an email addressed to philmarsden2020 at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Bill. Um, uh, I can also assist uh, through the Global MAOR, and we can find uh, some time. I will discuss with Crystal and others on how to further support you um, in, in this um, uh, project and research. Yeah, and I see 
uh, your email is also in the chat. Uh, thank you so much. So we have, um, let me check. I know that uh, Eileen Cohen was online, my boss, at some point. Uh, I don't know whether she's still there and I, I don't want to put her on the spot, but I am in case she's around. Eileen, are you there? Do you want to uh, add some words? I think she had to leave, but I see Viviana, I think, who wants to take the floor. Viviana Wagner, she just turned on her camera. Yes to Viviana. No, Eileen. Yes. Viviana, please. Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. And we saw you, but we, your, your camera is not on anymore, but that's okay. Go ahead. Uh, okay, that's strange because I actually should uh, turn, be turned uh, on, but uh, probably there's some uh, uh, technical program problem. Uh, thanks for, for this meeting and, and uh, thank you for all the presentations. I would like to add uh, some perspective uh, from, the, from uh, the Italian Agency for Development Corporate, Cooperation, which I represent. Uh, we are the implementing agency of the Italian cooperation system. And uh, well, it, it is very interesting for us also to see, um, to, um, to see how Mine action, uh, all these uh, uh, discussions around mine action and the and the integration of mine action in protection in, is is very interesting for us and uh, for this reason also Italy um, has been uh, uh, um, supporting very much uh, mine action activities uh, with a specific dedicated fund. This is uh, something. Uh, uh, that uh, is very different uh, among donors, another way we, we support mine action, but uh, I think that uh, having it integrated in the humanitarian aid envelope uh, really has uh, been facilitating so far this, uh, this integration. And uh, the civil society also in Italy has played a big role in, uh, in this, I must, uh, I must say, uh, the Italian section, for example, of the international cam campaign to ban landmines uh, has been very active in, uh, in um, you know, in uh, bringing the high in the agenda, the mine action uh, issue. And um, with, with regard to the, 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 the nexus uh, uh, issue, I would also like to, to, to say that uh, we are... Uh, drafting uh, uh, new guidelines uh, for uh, development uh, in the humanitarian peace nexus. Uh, we are um, started this process uh, among one year ago. There is a working uh, group uh, uh, drafting these guidelines together with the civil society, with university, with, uh, of course, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Italian Agency. Uh, and has been a long, a very long process and very tough one. And uh, I'm, well, I have to admit that mine action issues are, are uh, really are sometimes uh, uh, set aside, and some, if I must say, uh, on, on the humanitarian, you know, the more um, bigger humanitarian aid uh, um, narrative. Uh, but, uh, uh, Definitely, there is a, a space uh, if we think about the nexus. Also, uh, taking uh, the, the, the recent recommendations from the USCD DAC. Uh, so, my actually my question, and um, I'm trying to get your help in this. Uh, um, if um, there is some, you know, some indication from your uh, from UMA, for example, as. Uh, um, leader of the area of responsibility for mine action on how to really uh, um, operationalize uh, mine action and how mine action can contribute uh, concretely into this nexus because uh, this is really what it seems to me to be missing. And thank you very much for, for all the other presentations. Uh, thank you, Viviana, for the remarks. So um, uh, I don't, um, excellent questions. I think there are so many other um, colleagues who would know more than myself on how to answer that question. But uh, one of the commitments, I will get back to you uh, because 
kind of stealing the words of William, we, in the Manashan sector, not necessarily UNMAS, we almost live it on a daily basis, I would say. Whether we have one foot in peace operations, one foot in humanitarian, and one foot as a precursor in the sequencing of issues to be taken care of towards development. Uh, I'm happy to set up a meeting with you. And by the way, tomorrow we have a meeting with Italy, uh, some other branch. Uh, so um, we'll be happy to, to follow up with you and, and give you the perspective on how we can add value. Uh, that could be my, my, my two cents in this setting while we have so many people connected. Uh, but thank you so much for your remarks. Any other hand from anybody? Uh, Christelle can come in or to let me know if there's anybody. No, I don't see anybody, but I have people, uh, you know, chatting with me in the box and uh, echoing some of what uh, was said by um, by our colleague from DDG about the Nexus and saying that. Uh, Christelle? Yes. We want to see you when you speak. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yes, no, some people are echoing the views of, uh, of, uh, of uh, DDG, the head of DDG, and saying uh, that's one of the challenges uh, that's the cluster system and, and also uh, on Mass Monday to a certain extent is, is somewhat limiting us and, uh, and it's hard to engage in this uh, Nexus long term approach uh, when you know, different organizations have a little different piece. Of puzzle, um, so I'm getting some comments on this. I also Christelle, have to elaborate because I don't think you saw my hands went up, but maybe uh, it went down again. Uh, it's just speaking hi. <laughs> yes, I, yeah, actually, I'll, I'll give you the floor and then I'll tell you the other comments on the window that I've received. Okay. Sure. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, LK, please, and I want to thank you. LK, I think, I think you asked, I, I, I heard your voice, you asked for the floor, and I want to publicly thank you for your amazing work, not only on victim assistance, because you have been an amazing co-coordinator of the Global Man Action AOR. So thank you so much, and we're happy to hear you, LK. Thank you so much, Bruno. Apologies, my camera won't flash on, but I can see you. Um, so thanks to you, Bruno, for recognizing that. Uh, thanks to you also, William, for your appreciative words um, to humanity and inclusion, but also to the work of the sector as a whole. Um, I agree that we're sort of at the center of the nexus and we have a role to play in, 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 in all of those streams, continuums, uh, contexts. And, and Bruno, you might remember that I raised this in a meeting with you, a round table at the UN in 2015 and 16. And, there was a proposition to to sit my action squarely in protection. I said, yeah, but let's not forget about triple nexus and also, of course, about legacy contamination and the work we have to do there, which, you know, in, in terms of the cluster system and where the AOR sits, we tend to focus on the humanitarian sector. So what I would like to say is a bit of a critical uh, look at us as a sector uh, against the backdrop of all the appreciative comments made by William. Much appreciated. Um, and that is that I couldn't agree more with both Richard and, and, and William that we do sit squarely at the center of the nexus, but as a sector, we have to do a lot more to actually operationalize that understanding. And let me just unpack that for a brief moment. Um, it is about um, measuring our successes, congratulating ourselves, um, on things that go beyond number of square meters, number of items cleared, number of beneficiary reached, to actually starting to demonstrate that we are impacting people's quality of life. And I think uh, here, as William was highlighting, we have a very unique position because of the level of community engagement we have. So I think we need to start as a sector to also lever that community engagement to identify community priority needs through community priority um, priority setting mechanisms. We have to expand our explosive ordinance risk education by linking to other sectors. And it was good to hear Bill speak 
to also engage with livelihood actors because we know that a lot of people do not just take risk out of ignorance but also because they are simply needing to access uh, an income generation activity and that often involves risk-taking behavior. Um, I think um, in that sense I'm making a call to donors uh, so that when they fund us they don't just evaluate us midterm and at the end of the funding cycle but also say hey we're going to come back two years and five years after we have funded an organization to engage in money. If we can demonstrate impact two years and five years down the line when it comes to quality of life, so socioeconomic indicators, access to services, access to water, um, issues related to gender from a victim assistant perspective, you know, are girls survivors equally going to school as boys survivors? I mean, I could go on here, as you know, VA is very close to my heart, but can we start to push the sector and can we push ourselves? to actually start to be more accountable to changes along the triple nexus by looking at collective outcomes. Uh, this is the big discussion right now in the humanitarian sector. And that means that A, we need to link better to other sectors and hopefully Bill, your work is gonna sort of be a wake up call to the sector that we do have to link better to livelihood actors. And I also say that it you know, is important for us to link to other actors and other sectors outside of livelihood. And, and we hope very much that the International Mine Action Standard on Victim Assistance is going to mobilize the mine action sector to start reaching out to health actors, to rehab, to MHPSS service providers, to livelihood, to a ministry of education, to share that what they know uh, on the base of the casualty data they have with broader sectors to mobilize action on behalf of affected communities and those that we represent. So yes, we sit squarely. Let's also make sure that we start to demonstrate impact um, that is uh, congruent with showing that we're making changes along the triple nexus. Thank you and apologies for the background noise. There's children playing next to me. Over to you, Bruno. Thanks for having given me the floor. Thank you, LK. Again, here's another good candidate for closing remarks. Um, uh, listen, uh, very insightful. Um, as a practical, now that I'm back in, in uh, sitting here and triple hatted almost, um, we should and continue to consult uh, with everybody. And now we have a new layer donors, NGOs, operators, international, nationals. Uh, UN folks, um, at the same time, uh, in that environment where I also see funding being prioritized towards COVID-19 uh, related issues and other things, uh, competition is tough. Uh, let me check if there's any other hand, I, I see none. Um, as I, uh, I think I would close, we're a little bit over time and I much appreciate your participation. Um, hopefully Christelle is not too angry at me. I will close now because some of you know I'm going uh, to, the, to the Palais to deliver a statement in the CCW conference also, but I'm staying here. Can I ask a favor to all those who can voluntary, can you put your cameras on? Hopefully it doesn't crash the system so that in my few words, I see a little bit who are the folks who are connected. Very kind of you, very nice. And hopefully you can still see me and uh, thank you for your participation. Um, in the hopes you can still see me, um, a few things. In addition to the gratitude that I owe all of you who participated took your some two, two and a half and more hours to be here. Um, I want you to know that this is quasi a first series of consultation that we are launching and we thank the Global Protection Forum to have allowed us this uh, opportunity. Um, I'm a bit of a practical person, and given as the LK, uh, you would remember that your meeting in Maputo got convinced us to do the UN <laughs> mine action strategy on victim assistance. 
and, and now we're almost a full circle with the IMAS, but, but, uh, and I thank you for that again. Based on the feedback I have, I believe we will come back to you with some concrete issues. Now, it's true, it's a huge meeting. There were strategic inputs, practical, local. So responding, I think we will look at the strategic level because I heard strengthening guidance. So we will look in some kind of a product and we will consult maybe in smaller groups with you. That's strategic level. I also heard practical issues. Uh, now, uh, I, I heard interest. And I, again, I'm not after the money of the donors right now. I heard interest. So what is the membership of this MAOR? Should we look again? Who is a member? Who is an observer? I don't even know. But I think we should look into that level. And I heard, I think, also guidance to the field level. So we should have either a series of strategic operational products, um, but we should do, I'm not going to do a roadshow, but a virtual roadshow for consultations. Then approaches with regards to who gets involved and without ex exclusivity, and I'm totally against uh, some of you who know me, I like inclusion, uh, we can do better. Now, the other side of the coin is I'm a practical person. I cannot take stuff that I cannot chew on at the central level. There could be other ways for us as a community uh, to support each other. And there's no free lunch either. Whether we need to support an initiative, I heard roster system, more hands, no big uh, operations of mine action, but we need people for that. We can put uh, projects together and projectize what are the needs of this MAOR. And I heard the issues and the challenges we are having both at the field level and the global level. Um, I will leave it at that. Um, for now, I can only thank the organizers. Special thanks to Daniela. I don't see you. Are you online? I mean, I'm sure you're online, otherwise you would not exist. Uh, who controlled us. Uh, where's your face? Is Daniela here? I can't see her. Anyway, she's, she's done well. Huh? And Kayla, who is uh, the note taker and hopefully will put everything together for us to do a, a concrete follow-up to this. I see Lionel, I will not put him on the spot because we are closing. We, I think you disappeared with Eileen and I called for Eileen, didn't call you. I don't know, is Eileen back, but we are closing the meeting. We are so thankful to all of the speakers from different parts of the world. Thank you so much. And I take the commitment that we will follow. Don't worry, I will not call you again for a two and a half hour meeting too often, but we will follow up on key products and see how to move based on the needs of the beneficiaries and those whom we serve. Thank you so much. Now, right after this, I changed the order. There is a three question evaluation if somebody can put the link, I will have to, we are closing, we will put it in the chat. It takes five minutes, seriously, an eval part of the Global Protection Forum, I understand, Christelle. We will send the link. If we cannot do it here for any technological pro uh, issues, we will send to all of you who are there a short link to answer our question. Thank you so much and have a good evening. Merci beaucoup. Ciao and goodbye. You can wave for those whom I see. Bye. Thank you very much.